And the next track today, just before the main keynote of Login Wozniak, we have uh, one more track here, will be Startup Trends and Education. And education has been um, disrupted quite, quite heavily uh, recently, and we will see uh, just how Justinas will give a presentation on the trends in education and what kind of startups are appearing there. And then we'll see a few cases from here uh, which are happening in Lithuania. So uh, I'd like to invite on stage Justinas, who is the co-founder of Tabule Tuve, which is like a Skillshare workshop session before. And uh, he will give an amazing presentation on startup trends in education. Okay, so hi guys, my name is Justinas. And I'm here to talk to you about the exciting things happening in, ed in education today. I know that many of you were not too happy with your studies. I mean, some of you have bad lectures, some of you were just not, uh, not satisfied with the uh, quality of, ed of education you got, and some of you chose the bad profession. And uh, I mean, I, am, uh, uh, I have a bachelor's degree in science and phys physics, uh, but I know that that is not my only calling, at least not the only one. And I know that most of you have other callings and other interests, and this makes us an everlasting students. And this is why the field of education is so interesting today. Uh, in this presentation, as this is a start fair, I will try to talk a lot uh, more uh, on facts, on uh, monetization methods, on types of educational, educational startups today in the world. And of course, at the end, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the future trends. And uh, as many uh, of these presentations do, I'll start, start my presentation with a quote. And most of these presentations about edu educational things uh, begin with a quote of the wonderful writer Mark Twain. And that quote is, college is a place where uh, professors lecture notes go to students lecture notes without passing th through a basis of either. However, uh, I want to base my today's presentation on something more optimistic, although this may be true in some cases. Uh, and I want to base my presentation on a quote of uh, the great entrepreneur Henry Ford. And he has said, anyone who stops, stops learning is old, whether at 20 or 80. So, uh, what's, this all, what's this hype is all about, about education? To understand that, we have to understand the problems that education system faces today. And those problems are, first of all, it's money. Because in the last 30 years, uh, the price of college studies in the U.S. has risen by 1,210%. This is preposterous. And actually, recently, the student debt of, of, uh, in, in America have exceeded $1 trillion. This is pl plainly stupid. And uh, I'm sorry I don't have statistics on, on, on Europe, but we have our share of financial problems here too. And this is especially bad when you take in consideration that the effectiveness of this educational system is taken, uh, is questioned every day. And one of the great science speakers of today, Neil deGrasse Tyson, has recently posted a message in Twitter saying that uh, the best colleges admit only successful students, offering no evidence the college itself forced the students' later success. The other thing is that we, it's, no, it's no secret that cu the current system of education is based on very old British colonial principles, and, and those principles are based on productivity and standardization, the standardization because th in those times the, the government needed to produce a lot of workers in the fastest ways possible. And I mean productivity in a bad way, and we'll explain that later. Uh, and this is horrible because we still take thousands of students in schools, thousands of students in universities, and treat them like one single medium. And there is no better way to deny them of their passion and of their, pa of their talents, two of the qualities that should be treated as the greatest tre treasure from the youngest age. And we need individualization and we need personalization and this comes from uh, exactly these companies I will talk about later. And of course there is speed. Today's world is all about speed. I mean, we need to, uh, we need to learn fast and also understand fast. Uh, and speed is an essential part of good productivity. And what I mean by bad productivity is that uh, today the educational world is based on memorization. And that may seem a good, good idea at that moment, but I mean, it, it gives such short-term results and, and the, in long term, the results are actually horrible and slows down the process a lot. And the good productivity is when we base our education on understanding and solving questions. 
and that may take a little bit longer in the moment, but will pay off greatly in, uh, in future. And uh, so we all know that actually a fast adaptability is not a property of, of educational system today. When we take in consideration that iPhone was released and in, was introduced in 2007, and that takes 12 years for a student to finish school, four more years for a student to finish bachelor degrees, and two more for masters for some of us. Uh, it becomes obvious that, this, that the world that students started learning in is not the same as he finished his studies. So these are the, the, the three problems. And in this presentation, we'll, we'll go over some types of, of educational startups and companies which, who are innovating in this field and who are showing some really good results. And we will start with MOOCs. And MOOCs are massive online, uh, massive open online courses. And in this picture, you see actually uh, Sebastian Tchern. He is, for those who don't know, he is uh, uh, a lecturer at, at Stanford University. He is Google Vice President, uh, one of the Google Vice Presidents. Uh, he is one of the creators of Google Autonomous Car, and he also created uh, one of the main uh, platforms uh, of uh, massive, on, uh, massive open online courses, MOOCs. So. Uh, and the other two players in this field uh, who, who are worth noticing is, uh, are Coursera and Udacity. <laughs> Coursera and Edi Edix, uh, because Udacity was created by Sebastian Turn. And Edix is created by uh, MIT and Harvard. Uh, the, it's, it's a no non-profit organization, and MIT and Harvard are, are investing $60 million in developing the system. And Coursera already has 3, 3 million users, of whom 1.7 have, have already signed for at least one class. Uh, monetization has been a big problem for such, such startups like Coursera and Udacity recently, because uh, the only way for them to monetize was to connect employees and, and their students, and also sometimes uh, give diplo diploma, diploma certification. But a lot has change, uh, changed in uh, recent months because both Coursera and Udacity began developing courses with universities uh, to give real college credit for, for those courses. Uh, I mean, these are not the high level courses, but uh, something like, for example, algebra, where you have huge classes uh, and there is none uh, student, student teacher connection. So it is, it, it's obvious that it, it, it is uh, smart to Give, uh, to pay one teacher to create a great course on, on, on for example, algebra, uh, than to pay 200 teachers to, uh, for each one, uh, to pay each one of 200 teachers to, to teach a class, a huge class, which is not productive and uh, may be taught not in the best way. A huge myth often associated with MOOCs is that uh, they are much easier than the, for example, co co those same called college classes, uh, college classes, but that cannot be more more false because everyone who tried Coursera, Udacity, or especially Edix knows that they are hard. Yeah, freaking hard. I mean, uh, at Coursera you need to do tests, you need to do assignments, uh, reading, uh, write, writing. Uh, at one course, I had to produce a prototype actually. So there is a lot of work in there, and the question often often asked. Uh, often asked, can, will MOOCs replace traditional studies? Because it seems that they have all the right qualities for that. But actually, my, my answer is no. They can definitely improve those, uh, those university courses. They can definitely improve the work at the universities because they can remove unprofessional lectures. They can remove, uh, they can uh, bring the price, price of, of uh, education lower and so on and so on. So on paper, it may seem so, it may seem so, but uh, but there is a big but, and the big but is, uh, what's the best university, uh, what's the best school in the world today? I mean, one, one might say it's Stanford, one Harvard, MIT, Princeton, Yale, or, so on, or some other. But actually, no, the best, best school ever is actually Hogwarts. And for those who are out of this world, Hogwarts is a school of wizardry from Harry Potter. And why is it the best school ever? Because it's freaking awesome. I mean, for real. Then they do not need no iPhones or iPads to be awesome. Uh, and they are awesome because they have magic. And I am actually not talking about the magic of Harry Potter. I'm actually talking about the magic that happens when two peop that people, passionate people, come together to learn with each other. 
and no MOOC, no online course, course will ever change that. And that's for sure. But, but if you could think of a, uh, of a way to bring that awesomeness to the internet, you can be a big winner here. So uh, let's jump to another category and let's talk more about uh, people teaching people. So uh, let's call this ca category skill sharing. And uh, the biggest player in virtual world naturally is YouTube because we all seen, you've seen YouTube videos, uh, videos with teaching tutorials. But let's talk about another company, a company called Skillshare. It's a company for, uh, for sharing your knowledge, actually, yeah, because world of education does not consist only of these traditional subjects like uh, math, uh, economy, sciences, and so on and so on. I mean, world of education is much wider, and we should not think about it in such constraints. Uh, there are so many things to learn. Uh, I mean, you want to learn to fix a bike, for example. There is a class for that on Skillshare. You want to learn to cook meatballs or to design your own sneakers. There are classes for that on Skillshare. And Skillshare is really doing very well on monetizing because they, they create a possibility for teachers to, uh, to earn really good money. Just recently, uh, a teacher at Skillshare who, who teaches uh, rugby development earned $100,000 a year just for Skillshare classes. So yeah, so and talking about teachers, let's jump to another category, category of basic education. And the teacher who did the, the biggest influence on the world in the recent years is Salman Khan. And in the category, in category of basic education, I, I, I'm, I want to talk about his product, uh, Khan Academy. It started by Salman Khan just putting a couple of lectures on YouTube for his cousins. Uh, but now it grew to a huge platform, the thousands of subjects with, uh, with uh, uh, game mechanics, with uh, cl class data given out to teachers and so on and so on. And it really makes a big difference in a, uh, in a class. Uh, it's worth noticing that Khan Academy is actually uh, a great propagator of uh, flipping the classroom. And that means, uh, that means that lecturing can't be done by internet can be done by technologies uh, and this allows teachers to do more interactive stuff with, with students uh, and this is actually a, a great field uh, for innovation still for young companies okay let's go on to another category which which I like to call startup schools and these schools uh, are now based in most of the big startup cities in the, in the world uh, they are schools unlike uh, any I've mentioned before they have real world campuses uh, and the greatest thing about them that you learn with other people who are passionate and into the thing they are learning. And we all know that it is that much easier to learn something than you know that, that people surrounding you are passionate and, uh, and, uh, and wanna want to learn as much as you do. Uh, there are, let's jump to some, ex some examples of in this category. For example, General Assembly. Uh, it's a startup uh, who collected, already has collected uh, more than 40, uh, 14 million dollars and they have campuses in eight cities of, of the world. Uh, and uh, I mean, these, these, uh, these schools give out uh, weekend workshops, uh, normal lessons, full out three month courses, everything you need to become a great entrepreneur. Uh, and while General Assembly is situated in eight cities of the world, for example, St Starters League is situated in Chicago. And unlike General Assembly, they are not coming to your city, but actually inviting you to come to, uh, to Chicago, to the center of Chicago, to their great campus and, and learn where, there. And they have five main courses, courses for developers and designers. And the thing is that you, after three months, uh, three months uh, in this school, you get full knowledge needed to actually go out and, and to try to reach your dreams because uh, try to reach your entrepreneurial dreams. Okay, but actually the one greatest thing about these schools and, and products I mentioned earlier uh, is this. Uh, on, uh, on a conference uh, South by Southwest just a month ago, one of the greatest entrepreneurs today, or perhaps the greatest entrepreneur today, Elon Musk, uh, if you don't know him, he co-founded PayPal. Uh, now, now does amazing job at Tesla Motors and also SpaceX and also so Solar City and so on and so on. So he was asked in that conference, uh, what has been your biggest mistake? And his answer was this, 
So the biggest in general I've made and I'm trying to create is that I put too much weight on talent and not personality. I, it actually matters whether someone has a good heart. And the coolest thing about these schools, startup schools and these products is that now startups can base their hiring decisions not only on the experience of someone, not only of their professional knowledge, but actually, uh, actually on, on that if, if that person is just a good per person and has a good personality because uh, nowadays, uh, nowadays learning is affordable and uh, uh, effective money-wise money not only for big companies and big corporations but also for startups. Uh, and uh, we all know that, that great products are actually first built by great people and only second by great specialists. So let's move on to something more, more classical, online courses. And actually, there's nothing classical, classical about this category. Uh, we all know that coding is, is the skill of the future, skill of today, actually. And uh, Code Academy is one of the great innovators here. Uh, they use a lot of uh, gamification methods to motivate, uh, motivate their students. And I mean, it's you still need a lot of self-motivation, but uh, after you get a badge with a cool robot on it, saying that you are a master of CSS, it becomes pretty easy to continue your studies. Treehouse, on the other hand, gives out paid, uh, paid le le lectures. And uh, most of the time, it's really worth your money. Because uh, with so many, uh, so, so many uh, startups in this field, you can really see how the quality of lessons, the interactive stuff, uh, everything is, 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 is rising. And they already accumulated, accumulated 12.4 million dollars in, in investments and they are doing great because the now they not only are not only expanding to a people market but also to corporations market and they already signed up a couple of big corporations for, uh, to give them the, their classes and I mean this is this is worth noticing that uh, not only people but also big corporations companies startups are waiting for this re for this revolution in, educa in education uh, next we have Voxy. Voxy is doing some, something really interesting in, in language learning. Uh, they are taking uh, the content from your life, for, for example, movies, your conversations even, letters, songs you listen and so on, and making that content into educational material. And this, uh, this is how education becomes just a byproduct of, of your everyday life. And I mean, it's, it's freaking great. Udemy is a big player, uh, big player now in online courses because, uh, well, they're, they're doing great money-wise. But uh, top ten of their uh, of their uh, lectures uh, of their instructors earned 1.6 million dollars in the last year in sales. So I mean, there is a lot of money in, in this industry. Uh, but the biggest money here is actually in educational tools, and educational tools may not be something something hip, something cool, uh, they not be doing uh, some, some work, uh, getting a lot of press attention, for example, but uh, they are doing s the dirty job, the job that needs to be done, uh, and that has a lot of fin fin financial potential. And a great example here is to you. To you is working with uh, universities to advertise, manage, uh, and expand their online courses. I mean, it doesn't have any buzzwords in it, but it has a lot of financial potential, and they already have collected more than $90 million in investments. Uh, Newton is creating a sy system to, uh, to personalize educational material for, for you. Edmodo is, is a social network for, uh, for teachers and, stu and, stu and students. And uh, all the, 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 both Newton and Edmodo has made 52 and $40 million in, in investments in, in recent years. Uh, respectively. So, I mean, the big money, b money is, is, is here, actually. Uh, and as I promised, a couple of ideas of what's coming, what's coming next. Uh, what's coming next? So, the big problem now, uh, and when I say problem, I mean business opportunity, is that uh, we need a lot of university in integration. This is courses, this is tools. Uh, and as I said, there are a lot of business opportunities here. Mobile is still not integrated greatly uh, uh, in this field, and it needs a lot of work to be done. Augmented reality can be used extensively in, edu in education. 
Uh, and I actually can't wait to see the first class done on Google Glasses because, I mean, wow, there is a lot of uh, potential, uh, potential for creativity there. And it will be very interesting to see uh, how future generations will, will learn uh, having these, all these tools. And the question often asked about this, this thing is, uh, is this an evolution or revolution of education? Uh, and I want to try to answer that. Now we are building tools, uh, tools based on this model. We take new technologies and we put those new technologies on the, our old system, system. And this is called evolution. But perhaps, perhaps we can take new technology and with that new, te new amazing technology create a concept of new education which is something really needed. And by this I just want to say that although there are a lot of great, great companies in this field, a lot of great people in this field, uh, a lot of awesome products in the field, but the fact is that you still have a chance to change the game. So that's it. Uh, if you need uh, company links which I mentioned in, in this field or my contacts, you can find everything right here. So thank you very much.